what happened, guys? The Trout Fragnik was absolutely furious because Man United didn't want to sign any player last January. In general, they had some opportunities, but also they didn't want to sign specifically any striker. Rewinding one year into the last January transfer window, and it was Ralph Radnick's only window as Man United's interim manager. We were linked with loads and loads of players. Somebody who could come in, help the squad, given that what was going on with Lord Voldemort, he who must not be named, Martial's injuries, we were still in the Champions League and everything. He wasn't allowed to sign anybody. Fast forward to the upcoming January transfer window. We're hearing rumours that Manchester United are going to be blocking any moves for, from Ten Hag in the window with a focus on the summer. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through uh, the, the, these comments from Fabrizio Romano talking about Eric Ten Hag's strategy of what he wants Manchester United to do in the transfer window that's coming up. So make sure you subscribe if you're new. But let's run through it. And I want to start here with comments from Ralph Ragnick. Now, Ralph is a man who I genuinely still believe was the right man in the wrong job. And I will stand by that. And you'll remember that back towards last January, he was he was questioned, I think after the window closed, about signings that United could have made that and United didn't make. And this is what he had to say about that. He said the answer at the time was no. There was no player on the market that could really help us. But there were a few. Diaz, Alvarez and Vlahovic are three names that he mentions there. He talks about how, look, we were still in three competitions, the Champions League, the FA Cup, fourth in the league. In the past, it doesn't help us anymore. I spoke to the board and said, look, shouldn't we at least speak and try and analyse if we could get a player either on loan or on a permanent deal? And the answer was no. Now, to the three names mentioned there, Luis Diaz, I think that was a case of Liverpool going aggressive and getting a player that they were going to sign in the summer six months ahead because they were, there was a worry that they weren't going to be able to get him. Strategy. Planning. Then you've got this man, Julian Alvarez, who I personally think far more than Dusan Blahovic was somebody that Manchester United could have gone out and signed. He was offered to us. We decided not to act on it. What happened? City got him, loaned him back out there, and all of a sudden now he's emerged and he's going to be an excellent squad member alongside Erling Haaland. City have just strikers galore. That's what happens when you plan properly. But going back to what Eric Ten Hag wants this January, this was also an interesting part from Fabrizio's latest video, by the way. The link is in the description if you want to watch a full one. I'm just reacting to some key points on it and expanding on those, I suppose. This is what Fabrizio had to say. But what about January? For May United, it's now important, and this is the feeling also around Eric Ten Hag, to understand that if there will be some big opportunity, May United have to be ready on the market also in January. And this is the big thing I think that Eric Ten Hag is trying to do and it's no surprise this is coming during this international break. I've covered this already in quite a bit of detail here on United People's TV. I've done two videos. Number one here, where I looked at what I feel Eric Ten Hag would be looking at restructuring behind the scenes. I put the Glazers number one because that's what we all want. Probably, I don't think that was the conversation that Ten Hag had. But look, he needs a transfer specialist to come in and help him. Here's Paul Mitchell, here's Lewis Campos, here's, some, here's somebody there to take control of that department away from John Murto. He needs a new scouting department in there. He needs improved facilities at Manchester United. The ability to plan years ahead. And I, I took a look at the, the options available in this transfer window. And I identified a striker as the key position. It was the key position last January. It's going to be the key position, I think, again, this January. But again, this is a final little comment from Fabrizio. Have a little listen. But Eric Ten Hag is very clear on this. He would love to see Man United reacting on the market in January if they will have big opportunities because we never... And this is, I believe, what Eric Ten Hag is. I don't think Eric Ten Hag is going to Manchester United's board and saying, look, I'm demanding signings left, right and centre. I think what he's saying is, you know what? As a football club, it's deals like this Julian Alvarez one that we've got to make more of. And I'm actually going to cover this in a bit more detail uh, in a video later this week. Because uh, from a sustainability perspective, Manchester United's summer transfer winner we just had, we can't do that every summer. We can't go out and spend 85 million on, on a winger and, and 55 million on a centre-back and 75 million on a central midfielder. It's not sustainable. It's just too much. You need to be making more signings like Tyrell Malassia. Now, I covered this already uh, in uh, my live stream this morning. It's from Laurie Whitwell on the Glazers and how the Glazers basically are kicking back against the notion that Eric Ten Hag wants Manchester United to be reactive in the market if the opportunity is there. He said this, look, United had a net spend of more than 200 million this summer, almost double the original projections. And owner Joel Glazer 
Chief Executive Richard Arnold and Football Director John Murto are focused firmly on summer 2023 as the next opportunity to significantly add to Ten Hag's squad. With look, the words there, funds are expected to be very tight. Now, is this going to be a case where you've got Eric Ten Hag, who, in my opinion, has really built some trust up, and I'll go into that in a little bit now, but Eric Ten Hag, who wants to activate the second step of his rebuild in January against the Glazers and the owners of Manchester United, who, let's be honest, we overspent this summer. We've overspent since Fergie retired. It's not Ten Hag's fault we've wasted the majority of that money. And if anything, I think his, he's earned the trust of the owners with what's happened since at the start of this season. We're still early doors, right? It's the 20th of September. But in terms of building trust, for me, not only we've we seen the impact of the signings of like Martinez, Anthony, I think, will only grow in importance as the season goes on. But Eric Ten Hag, after those first two games, that's when United decided to go, you know what? Here's some money that we didn't have about two weeks ago. The exact same situation as Manchester United the summer before when we signed Varane and Sancho and we were told there was no money. There was no money for a, a central midfielder and then we go and sign Ronaldo on half a million a week. Money's always there. It's like when your mate asks you to go out for dinner and you're like, oh, I can't afford it. The money's right there in your bank account. You've just decided that you can't be asked spending that money on that friend. That's why you're not going. The Glazers have always got the, it's because it's not their money. Manchester United have always got the money. And this isn't a case of coming in here and shouting at the owners to spend when we're not spending, blah, blah, blah. But it's about being smart. Being smart doesn't necessarily mean paying the most amount of money. And that Julian Alvarez one, for me, is the one that stands out. The one that was an opportunity last January to sign a player. What was it? 20, 30 million, I think they paid for him. To sign a player who was nowhere near his peak yet. As somebody who with good coaching and the right team and the right environment and the right system, right coach, might say that twice, that they can thrive. They are the signings that we need to be making. And that is why Eric Ten Hag, as Fabrizio Romano was confirming in those, those snippets from his video, Ten Hag wants Manchester United to have the ability to react. Ralph Radnick last January told the club the same thing. And the club just ignored him. As we ran through here, the comments from the start, he mentioned Diaz, he mentioned Alvarez, he mentioned Vlahovic, and the club said no on all fronts. And instead, Ralph was left to his own devices, and we know what happened towards the end of that season. It was an absolutely spectacular mess. But Eric Ten Hag has proven since, in my opinion, uh, since he's taken over as manager with all of his, his work and everything that we're building towards, I can, I can confidently see where Eric Ten Hag wants this team to be in two, three years' time. That's what's different about these transfers now. You can talk about backing managers and look, we backed Solskjaer. And what, what happened there? It left us with wan uh, and Maguire. And somehow we made profit on Dan James. We backed Mourinho and we were left with a bunch of Space Jam villains. Uh, Pogba and Matic and Ibrahimovic and all these just units, Lukaku. Units of men. And Ten Hag, yes, we're buying towards the system here, but we're buying towards an actual... We're not buying into Ten Hag's football. We're buying into Ten Hag's vision. We're buying into where Ten Hag wants to be in three years' time and where he's going to be taking this club to. And that's why I think it's a bit different. And that's why the idea here that Manchester United, they do need to change that strategy. Let Ten Hag take you down a different path. We've got to be reactive in January. It's not a case of going into the January transfer window and saying, look, we've got a budget of 100 million. Unrealistic for the January transfer window. You might make mega signings like Bruno, but that came after failing to sign him in the summer. You might make a signing like Luis Diaz. That's a rarity. January is a rarity for, for transfer, transfers of that size, but I guarantee you there are players in the 20 to 30 million mark who will be opportunities for Manchester United. More Tyrell Malaseas as a football club and as a business combined. That's what we need to make more of. That's why Ten Hag is pushing for the idea that we need to be reactive. We need to see if there's an opportunity there and grasp it. That's why we need this. New scouts, new specialists, everybody in place so that we can identify these players. I'm actually going to do some videos on this, do my own scouting uh, with some research, try and identify some signings that I think, you know what? If you're not to be doing the job properly, they'd probably be looking at a player like this. I'll bring that out later, uh, well, later in this international break. But you can let me know what you think about these comments from Ten Hag, not comments directly from Ten Hag, but the idea of his strategy, the fact that he wants the club to be reactive 
I would say be proactive rather than reactive when opportunities arise in limited windows like January. It is about being reactive. It's going to be after the World Cup as well. It's going to be all sorts up in the air. But what do you think about the idea that Manchester United need to be more reactive, need to be able to pull off more signings like Julian Alvarez? Because I think Ralph Randick was right. I've always thought he was right when it comes to strategy. He was the right, right man in the wrong job. But Eric Ten Hag is the right man in the right job at the right time. I think we need to listen to him. I don't think we need to listen. I know we do.